Okay, we're going to uh, kind of explore the fundamental theorem of calculus and the reasons uh, for the fundamental theorem in terms of the function y equals x cubed plus 5, simple function. So I have a table here, uh, and you can verify the table. We have x values going from 1 to 1.5 by interval of 0.1. And of course, this table could be um, extended as far as we want. We have our y values, and you can verify if we plug in 1, we get 6. You can verify all of these if you want to. Uh, but I believe they're accurate. I actually used Excel to generate this table, so I pretty much just copied down the table. Didn't want to rely on doing anything in my head. I wanted accurate results. Okay, so we calculate slopes. So the first slope, uh, from here to here, the rise is 0.331, and the rise divided by the run is 0.331 divided by 0.1, and that should be 3.31. I've got the decimal off in every one of these, so let me fix that. Okay, well, I was a little careless when I wrote those down. In any case, we have the average altitudes then in the area, average altitude uh, by multiplying the average of the two graph altitudes, the two y values, by the width of the interval, which is 0.1. Um, and uh, then accumulated areas, and we understand how that is. I've also labeled a quantity for rate of slope change. And let me motivate that a little bit. Uh, so when I look at these numbers, I see pretty easily that these numbers are increasing, and they appear to be increasing by bigger and bigger amounts. That looks like it increases by about 0.4, for example. This looks like it increases by pretty close to 0.6. And I can see similar uh, changes here. Uh, and I, I, I do recommend that you have enough mental arithmetic to be able to see those trends. I, if, it, you know, if the changes are out in the fourth decimal place, then I don't, uh, uh, well, uh, those would be about as easy to uh, calculate. You don't need to calculate them with great precision, but it's good to be able to see the trends rather than having to uh, draw, construct a graph or do anything else. Okay, these trends are important. Uh, I recommend you be able to follow them. Okay, or at least notice them or at least ask the right questions. The slopes change. Now I have the question, do the slopes change by the same amount each time? Um, well, it looks like about 0.6 there, and from here it looks like about 0.8 or 0.9, so it looks like there may be increasing by more and more. Is there a steady increase? Well, we know from the shape of this graph that that should be the case, but if this is a more complicated function, we might have more questions to answer. So uh, we can see that the slopes appear to be changing, uh, appear to be increasing, and not always by the same amount. Okay, well, then we have average altitudes and areas, and of course the areas are increasing uh, by, uh, clearly, by greater and greater amounts, um, and accumulated areas uh, that increase even faster. Um, this rate of slope change, though, I'm including this because in the first place it's a, a very important quantity. It's very much related to the wave equation and the heat diffusion equation. Um, uh, and, and, and the analysis of waves and uh, thermal changes through materials. So this is a very important quantity. Uh, others, not so important. So I'm including this, and I'm going to incorporate this in the graph. Um, so the uh, uh, slope here changes from 3.31 to 3.97. That's a change of 0.6. Yeah, well, okay, so it's a change of 0.66. I don't see the 66 up here, but I shouldn't. Okay, that's a change of 0.66, and we divide that by the width of the interval, and we get 6.6. .6. And that's going to be a rate of slope change that applies between the uh, first and or the second and third trapezoid, as we'll see when we label it. So I'm going to label the rate of slope change here, 0.66. And that's the change in the slope between here and here. Okay? That if I go between here and here, the calculation is simple enough. You got a change of 0.72, you divide that by 0.1, and you get um, 7.2, not 0.72. This is 6.6, .6, not 0.66. I do that a lot when I'm being careless. Okay. And then uh, this one you can calculate in your head again is um, 
and this one is 8.4. And it tells you how quickly the slope is changing. Okay, there's a definite calculus interpretation of that, but just at the very basic, that's how much the slope is changing. The interpretation of this depends, of course, on what the function actually means. But it's an important quantity for many uh, applications, and it's also a question that arises pretty naturally when we look at the trend of the slopes. Now, the reason we don't ask questions about the trend of the area or the accumulated area, uh, that's going to become apparent. Okay, now it should be very simple with these numbers to, cal to uh, sketch a trapezoidal approximation graph, and I recommend that you do that. I'll do it off screen. Okay, here's my graph where I've labeled the slopes here, and you can see that these numbers match these. Most of them, I think, should be legible. Uh, but of course, chalk is a little hard to uh, make completely legible. Um, the numbers for the altitude 6, 6.331, etc., match, of course, the y values, the numbers in this column. Um, the areas have been rounded to three significant figures, as have the accumulated areas, just due to the fact that I didn't make my graph all that wide. And those significant figures aren't all that important as long as we have them in the table. Okay, so what we have then is uh, the standard trapezoidal approximation graph. I'm going to add the rates of slope change. And the rate of slope change is the change in the slope. In other words, from 3.31 to 3.97 is a change of 0.66. And we divide that by the width of the interval, and we get 6.6. .6. And that's the rate at which slope is changing, the average rate at which the average slope is changing between this interval and this interval. Now, and we just call that the rate of slope change. But by the definition, see, there are some um, qualifications that we would need. And I'm going to put that up here in something like kind of a set of pointing braces. And this is pretty much above this common altitude, the altitude that's common to the two trapezoids over which we've calculated the rate of slope change, the average rate of slope change, average rate of the change of the average slope, if you want to be really technical, as I said. Okay, so I'm going to label the others, and then we'll move on. Okay, these average rates of slope change have been labeled. I've got dotted lines uh, kind of running down to the uh, graph to indicate uh, that we would associate this average rate of slope change with this point should be fairly accurate for this point. And this rate of slope change should be fairly accurate for this point of the graph or for this x value here. OK, now, now we have here TAG stands for trapezoidal approximation graph for y equals x cubed plus 1. That's what we have here. Now, we're going to do the trapezoidal graph of the accumulated areas. That is, the altitudes of this graph will be the accumulated areas, and the uh, x values will be identical uh, to the x values here. So uh, the accumulated area at the end of the first trapezoid is 0.617. So let's see. We're going to need a scale that goes from 0.617 up to 3.51. So actually, I'm going to start with a 3.51, just so I don't make this too big and end up not being able to do this one. So I'm going to do the 3.51 that corresponds to the end of this trapezoid, uh, where the accumulated area is 1.5. No, no, sorry, where the x value is 1.5, the accumulated area is 3.51. Okay, maybe a little hard to read there, but the same as this number and the same as uh, wherever it is, um, accumulated area. Uh, I'm looking up here and it's down here. And it should actually be 3.52. I wasn't very careful in rounding that off, but I'm not going to correct that. Okay. Um, and then we have a 2.71, which might be about here. And then a 1.97. Maybe that's about here. A 1.27. Which 
be quite a bit lower than that. At a 0.617. And then, of course, we've got a zero here because there's zero area accumulated here. Now, I can't label that, but I'm going to indicate it by a point on the axis. Okay, then I'm going to draw the slope segments. Now, they're going to kind of interfere with some of these numbers, but understanding where these numbers come from, uh, hopefully we can, we can uh, uh, keep track of what everything means. I've got to leave myself room. I should have numbered them lower because I'm really interested in the slopes here for reasons that we'll see in a minute. Okay, this graph didn't come out great, uh, but uh, I've got the slope segments, and they're drawn light enough that they shouldn't lightly enough that they shouldn't interfere too much with the legibility of these numbers. But that legibility is kind of limited to start with. In any case, uh, we easily calculate the slopes here, and you can corroborate these calculations. Now, the slopes are 6.17, 6.53, etc. Now, if we look back at the table for our original function, because these are the accumulated areas, this is a graph of the accumulated area function. So let's just call this the accumulated area function. We see that these average slopes match these average altitudes, and they're close to the y altitudes, OK? Uh, if we assign each of these slopes to the midpoint of its trapezoid, uh, we're going to be pretty close to the value of this function at uh, the x value in the middle of the trapezoid, OK? So uh, there's a close relationship between the slope of the accumulated area graph and the value of the original function. 